Glassware is a necessary component in every chemist's lab. Without it, chemists can't do anything. And you start off with something basic like a flask, and eventually you graduate to more advanced things like ground glass fittings. But there comes a time when you want to do a project where basic things that you can buy aren't enough. Or your glassware breaks, or cracks, or chips. This is where technical or scientific glass blowers come in. They're able to repair glassware that's worth repairing and make new stuff for different projects that require specialized glassware. Join me as I explore some basic scientific glass blowing techniques. Today we're going to go over basic concepts and basic things that you need to get going. And of course before beginning anything, safety equipment is a must. So we're going to start off with basic tubing. Now I'm not an expert in glass blowing, so everything that you see in this video take with a grain of salt, but I decided the best way to learn is to also try to teach you guys some of the basic techniques that I've picked up through my practices with glass tubes. Glass normally comes in in long tubes like this. Now these tubes are great because you get a lot and it's quite cheap, but it's hard to work with. You're going to want something shorter. I like to cut this length of about four foot in half so that it's easier to work with and I don't have to be swinging all over the place. Now let's zoom in a bit and let me show you how to cut it. We'll be using a basic chisel and you just put it on the top and hit it with the hammer and you get your pieces into the nice usable small hunks. And of course, yes, I was joking about that. You're actually just going to use a file. Now these lengths, you can find the center very easily by taking your hands and just moving them in. Your hands will automatically adjust until you reach the middle point and you found the middle. Next you're going to want to take the file and then one of the points make a score. Now this is like on a piece of paper when you put a tear in it. Before you couldn't rip the paper, but now that there's a tear in it, you can easily easily rip it. Now you just put some pressure behind it and you have two pieces of glass. Now this is some old dirty glass that I got from a chemistry lab that was getting rid of it, so I'm going to go wash it out first and dry it off. Now the glass is nice and clean, and from the cut, we are left with a jagged edge. Now this jagged edge is really sharp and can cut you, so we're going to heat it up and melt it a little bit in a technique called fire polishing. Now this is a very useful technique because let's say you had a Erlenmeyer flask like this and the chip was up here at the tip. So this chip would cause it to be sharp, but then you could take your torch melt it a little bit and it'll be go back to being round and you can re still use it without having to worry about getting cut by that or it shattering because that's a weak point. A good rule of thumb when working with glass is glass that's hot tends to look a lot like glass that's cool. So treat anything that's heated as it's still being hot until a good period of time after. Let's light up the torch and get going. Now, before I light the torch, let me just tell you that this is map gas. Map gas burns a lot hotter than propane. It comes in a yellow tube like this, and propane comes in a green tube like this. These are two different tips. This is what's known as a pencil tip. It'll have a finer point, 
and this one is a general point that's usually found everywhere but you're going to want the pointed tip because you can heat a smaller area and have more heat concentrated. Now we're going to want to slowly bring it into the flame. Don't go too fast or the glass will shatter. You're going to want to rotate it as you do. And there it is, all fire polished. Now let's do the next piece. And now that piece is all fire polished up. Let's have these sit off to the side and cool down. Notice how I said rotate. This is because if you only ro heat one side and not rotate, you'll just fire polish one side and it'll melt in and you won't get a nice tube. But if you continue to rotate it, then you get an even heat and an even fire polish. Now how did I go about rotating this? Here I have a glass rod, which I've put a marking on it so you can see it spinning. Now how you're going to hold this is wrap it around with three fingers and hold it like this. Then you're going to use these two fingers as the motor to spin it. Well, this holds it in. This will allow you to spin it without it going all over the place. Now it'll take you a little bit of time before you're able to keep it in one spot so it doesn't fluctuate. Now you can see that it's a little movement back and forth. You can move up closer so it doesn't do that as bad but it just comes with practice and skill. This is very important for the next thing that we'll do. We'll actually be forming one of these rounded tips, which involves spinning while adding air into the tube so it expands. Let's light the torch and get going. Now take our glass rod and slowly bring it into the heat, not to thermal shock it and cause it to crack. Remember to constantly spin it to evenly heat it. Now that we have that huge molten glass bead in the front, let's switch hands and using the right hand, grab the pliers and pull it off.
Now that we got most of the glass removed, we're going to melt it down until we get a nice hot tip. And we're going to add air into it to cause it to bulge out into a little bubble. Now that we got it into our round shape, we're going to use the blowtorch and heat up the whole tip of it, of the glass rod. We're kind of using the blowtorch right here to anneal it. Pretend the blowtorch flame is a brush, and you want to brush away the stress so the glass doesn't crack. Now we're going to set this off and let it time to cool. Now here's what we've made, front of the bottom, but you notice that there's some glass that has beaded up on the right hand side, which is pretty bad, but I have to say it's kind of hard to move this around the camera, so I'm going to show you one that I made previously, which turned out a lot better. Now you can mitigate this problem by removing more glass and heating it up more even and, by, and pushing more air into it. It's all about experimentation with this to try to get it as perfect as you can into that nice test tube shape. Now this is an earlier one that I made which has the nice round and even glass distribution throughout the whole thing. So this will make a nice test tube or the nice end of an ampule. Thanks for watching and see you next time. If you have any comments, concerns, or just want to yell at me for something, post that in the comments section below as I read all the comments. If you want to join a place where there's like-minded individuals that you can talk about chemistry, check out my Discord server. There are plenty of people there to talk to and there's a wide variety of topics covered. I don't know, but I've been told uranium ore is worth more than gold. I sold my cad, I bought me a Jeep, I got that bug and I can't sleep. Uranium fever has gone and got me down. Uranium fever is spreading.